over the weekend, more news broke regarding Luis Rubiales and his future. We'll get into that in just a second. But first, let's take a look back at the timeline of events since Spain won their first ever Women's World Cup. At the Women's World Cup trophy ceremony, Spain Federation President Luis Rubiales gave Jenny Hermoso an unwanted kiss. The next day, he issued an apology amid mounting pressure. FIFA then opened a disciplinary hearing against Rubiales. The Federation president refused to step down. Spanish players declared that they would not return to the national team until Rubiales was removed. Hermoso broke her silence, confirming that the kiss was not consensual. FIFA then provisionally suspended Rubiales as the Federation released and deleted a statement calling Hermoso a liar and threatening legal action. Rubiales' mother then went on a hunger strike as Spanish prosecutors opened an investigation for sexual assault. Finally, this past Friday, the Spanish Court of Arbitration ruled that the government could not suspend Rubiales. For more on this, we welcome in our CBS Sports reporter and Spanish insider, Guillem Balaguer. Guillem, we have seen Rubiales state that he has done nothing wrong, that this is a, quote, media lynching. And now the Court of Arbitration has said that his offense is not severe enough for the Spanish government to suspend him. Can you talk us through that decision? It's so uh, difficult to explain it. You have to go into technicalities. Basically, the Administrative Tribunal for Sport had had to use a law, the law that uh, it's uh, in the realms to use, which is one that was written in 1990, because the one that was approved in 2022 that would have reflected the behavior of Rubiales as very serious, and it would have allowed the government to suspend him, basically is not fully motion. So in the law of 1990, it says that his behavior is just serious. And that means that there will be now an investigation. But it stops, as you say, the government taking the decision to move him aside. And it limits, really, the, um, the power of the government, <laughs> of the whole government, to actually do something about it. So um, we may get into uh, what other ways we can get rid of Rubiales, but uh, the one that everybody's hoping it works is the one from FIFA, who, of course, has suspended it for three months. And everybody hopes that in that period he gets investigated and found out that he's completely out of um, any kind of reality world that he was wrong and as such that he will have to be punished. We'll have to see. Yeah, Guillaume, the craziest thing is he doesn't even think he did anything wrong. However, you opened that door. You said we're going to get into it. I want to dive right into it. How does he get out of office? What needs to happen? The, uh, there is a civil court, uh, the state prosecutor, who has started uh, basically investigating him, but needs Jenny Hermoso to come out and back his statements and, uh, and et cetera, and a procedure that will take months. That's one way. The other way is what we say in FIFA. Uh, there is another way uh, that we were all hoping that could something could go in that direction, which is the Federation itself, to take steps and create a vote of no confidence against Rubiales. But the Federation have not taken that step. All they said is, we would like you to resign. Come on, please, resign. And that doesn't go any far because, of course, he will not resign. Remember that the new, uh, the temporary president of the Federation right now was imposed by Rubiales, so and was chosen originally by Rubiales to be part of the federation. So, the the system is is rotten. Uh, but you said something key uh, that goes into the ethical and the moral part of this. You said that he doesn't feel he's done anything wrong. I tell you more. He has described himself as a victim, and the four of you and many other women out there. How many times have you heard? that whatever you com complain uh, you put forward for something that has happened to you, the man who is responsible for it feels guilt, sorry, feels the victim of a lynching. He is another example of that. And sadly, right now, there is no way, not immediate way to get rid of him, even though quite clearly Spanish society and the government and the opposition, everybody wants him out. It's really pulling back the curtain of how rotten it is from the inside out, from the top down. Uh, we recently saw that FIFA Pro released a statement, the governing body of FIFA in support of the players, saying, quote, that the system has failed us. Guillaume, you just alluded to that, how the system has failed it. But what does it tell us that FIFA Pro is saying that, putting that out there publicly about the system? We are moaning a little bit here that things should have gone faster, that he should be out. But you know what? We've seen one of the most 
crucial weeks of Spanish football and Spanish society because of this. Because all of a sudden, and it shouldn't have been the players, but it is the players who are actually leading this revolution in Spanish football. Hopefully something that will destroy the systemic discrimination that is against women in that uh, system. If you look at the decision makers, for instance, the uh, heads of the local federations, they're all men. All of them. No one isn't. So... They basically, the, the, the players, the, the women, have been saying for a while, nobody understands what we are mourning about, so we just get on with it. It's like when Jenny Hermoso gets the kiss, and again, like many other women, would have been like, what can I do? This is not wanted. This is not consensual. But what can I do? And you laugh it off a little bit until you realize the seriousness of it, and you realize that there is a society, there's a social wave in your favor, like Jenny has, in which case it's like, oh, really? Well, I'll tell you how it felt to me. Non-consensual and abuse of power. And now we just need to, to put it in uh, to the courts and hoping that uh, that they actually give her the, 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 the say that she's right. The problem, as you say, is that the system, especially sports system, it's uh, right now run by men who think like men and who don't have the, the bigger picture that uh, that Spanish society has been saying is pointing out quite clearly to discrimination of women. Guillaume, you point that out, that it's it's bigger than just the situation, right? That now it has pointed out these societal problems. That's something that Aitana Bolmati pointed out in her speech when she's receiving her award. She's saying that, you know, this is for anybody in, in a workplace or, or women in a workplace that have gone through similar situations. She's saying this is not just Jenny Hermoso. This is bigger than that and, and kind of sending a message. So how wonderful is it for you to also point out that it is bigger and the, the movements and the progress that we can make here go beyond just Jenny Hermoso? I think you are as an optimistic woman as I am uh, uh, optimistic as well. And I think that things will turn for the better. But this battle will not just finish today or will not just finish with getting rid of Rubiales. Quite clearly, uh, when the 81 uh, female players have decided not to join the national side, they're not saying when Rubiales is out. They're saying when the decision makers are out. Because it's been so many cases throughout the years of uh, things that are not right, uh, of behavior towards women from the coaches, of how the complaints of the woman were not taken seriously by, by the men in charge, by the federation, how they never felt protected. But you look at these pictures and you look finally, by the way, at the male players back in January. So it took a while. And we heard today the latest uh, statement on that direction from the uh, from the national side, the male national side, who, of course, have criticized Rubiales and have pointed out that his behavior is unacceptable. Well, finally, everybody's coming in this, into the same conclusion and they coming forward with it as well. Started all with uh, with a Betis player, uh, Borja Iglesias, saying, I will not join the national side unless things change. Now we're getting more people saying that. So I do think that this will produce a change. But, you know, the systems, they, they, the rotten systems especially, so difficult to move in the right direction. If even a government cannot make this happen quickly, what's the hope? The hope is, of course, that when the law of 2022 comes in practice and everybody basically takes decision based on that, there are a lot of um, progressive uh, laws and rules uh, towards or against discrimination. Because let me tell you something, Jenny, basically this, this society, Spanish society is feminist. It is. Things, uh, the, the law is one of the most progressive in Europe. Things are going in the right direction. But sometimes uh, there are, you know, things that have to be moved by everyone because they, they don't want to change, like the case of Rubiales and the Spanish Federation. Guillaume, you're talking about the men's national team captains coming out and speaking out. Can you just, since you already mentioned it, give me the importance of that solidarity of them coming out and speaking because it's something that, like you said, finally happened. But what does that do for the societal aspect for other men to see the players that they look up to take a stance? About time that they said it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it should have been day one. It should have been day one. They, they, uh, they all know. They, they, they mix uh, with the with the kit manufacturers or with the sponsors. They mix with these players, and I'm sure conversations must have taken place uh, in which you know they must have heard how badly they were treated. Really, well, uh, the Pelicuetas, the Moratas, basically the whole national side have come out with a statement today that says this is this is not right. And first of all, they said uh, it the the win. The World Cup win, let's not forget it because there's going to change a lot of things and 
girls in the streets will want to play football, more of them, because of this win. But secondly, the behaviour of Rubial is completely unacceptable. And for Rubiales to hear all these, to have players that don't want to join the national side, uh, others that uh, are actually telling him this is wrong, and for, for him to still um, claim that there is a wrong feminism, that uh, using his these daughters to actually say they are the right feminists. What, what is he talking about, right and wrong? Divide and conquer, isn't it? And of course, he's done nothing wrong, and he is the victim. He was so... And I just couldn't get it in my, into my head what he was saying. Uh, first, in front of the assembly, who of course were hitchhack because he went, they went there thinking he was going to, he was saying goodbye. Uh, and so everybody was clapping because they had to, because they, he's the boss. Uh, they didn't have to, but of course they felt they had to. And then we kept listening to all the rubbish that he was coming up with. And when he felt that the uh, administrative uh, tribunal of a sport uh, came out with the idea that it's a serious offense, he went like, I'm the victim. By the way, you, you've been accused of a serious offense, so do not show off. Just shut up and, yes, defend yourself. You've got in the right of do that. But you are so wrong. Guillaume, you pointed to a lot of things, chiefly that, you know, culture changes, but it does change slowly. And you're slowly seeing that tri trickle, trickle into sort of government, other laws. This is certainly setting a new precedent and will require, I guess, a reexamination of the way that the laws were written in the 90s. But where do we go from here, right? This, the situation's undeniably spiraled in ways that I could not have imagined. What's the path forward look like? Yeah, it's peril to a, to a place where, yeah, we didn't think it could happen just after winning the World Cup, but great it ha that it has happened. The law is there, 2022. But they had to go through a series of phases before you actually can apply it into the federations. That's the number one thing. And it's, it's in motion. It will happen. Uh, to change the federation will not be easy because it has to be changed from the inside. Remember, the federation is seen, uh, for the judicial reasons, is seen as a private institution with, yes, uh, public interest and public money. To change that, it has to ha have happen from the inside. And to be honest, Pedro Rocha, the president of the new, the temporary president of the federation, was saying this is the beginning of a new era. He was saying, but meanwhile, we're not seeing a vote of confidence. Meanwhile, we don't see anything changing. In fact, the uh, the, the, the the legal advice of Rubiales still there. The secretary of the federation brought in by Rubiales, still there. We're starting to hear a lot of things that he, Rubiales has done. People that used to run failed companies are actually having big jobs because in the Federation because they are friends of his. So he's created this, um, I don't know how to call it, this, this kingdom in which he's the king. And of course, they're not going to be a revolution from inside. So that one, it won't be easy. And things will take time. But hopefully, we're going into the right, right direction.